Hello friends, welcome to Shauna Stitches. I'm Shauna and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things I've been working on lately. This is episode number 64 and today is November 26, 2022 and I'm coming to you from my home in Oregon on the Pacific Coast. You can find links down below to all the projects I'm going to talk about, as well as to where you can find me on both Ravelry and Instagram, pretty much anywhere as Shauna Stitches. Before we dive into things, I'm going to tell you what I'm wearing here. This is my totally blanking, no frill sweater. Yes, it is. And um, you can see most of it there. Uh, I made this out of the 2019 Stress Knits Advent Calendar and Undyed Mohair. And it's fabulous. Uh, I want to make another one of these sweaters so bad. It is absolutely my favorite knit. Um, one, I think I like the mohair. I would like to make one without stripes. I do like the stripes, but something without might be nicer. I have a lot to talk to you about today. Um, we're going to start with some finished objects, go into works in progress. Then I think we're going to do the giveaway announcements from the last episode that I mentioned. We're giving away two patterns and one set of a progress keeper and a stitch marker. And then I think we're going to talk about some December advent knitting plans. So uh, I hope you'll join me by the cozy fireplace and uh, grab your knitting, crochet, whatever you'd like to do. And let's talk about some finished objects first. The very first one I have to show you is huge. I just got done taking finished object photos of it, so I'll pop those in here as well. But it is my travel mode 2.0. <laughs> my sock blocker got hooked to it. So yeah, it is a travel mode 2.0 shawl. It is huge. You'll see better pictures in the photos. And you might be thinking, that's very colorful for a travel mode 2.0 shawl because those use like five colors. And to that I say, this is the 2021 A Yarn to Die For Advent. So no spoilers, it's from last year. I still had it in my stash. I kept all of the daily packages in their numbered envelopes. So I used everything in the order that it came in. I do know right there is square number one or you know, advent day number one. And I worked my way through. The border um, is all different colors. You pick up all the way around, which is like over 600 stitches. It's a lot. Uh, but they do make it pretty easy to pick up because it's mostly uh, slip stitches along the border. And you knit in one color for a couple rows. And then you do some garter, which is a pink. So you have to pearl um, in another color. And then you do a couple more rows. And then you do a I-cord bind off. So because I was using an advent, I didn't necessarily have the right amount of colors that I needed. So I used one color for the first two rows or three rows, whatever that is there. I used another color for the garter, uh, but ran out partway through. The great part is I started with a gray and a blue and I ended with like a blue and a white. So they look so similar. No one would ever know. Then I did another color and bound off with four different colors. So i cord uses quite a bit of yarn, so I used one color for each border. I think that's so cool. And there's the last one. So I basically just picked whatever colors I had the most of. And all except for the one that I ran out of on the border, which I think was day 11, that was that blue gray I was talking about right there. Uh, I have leftovers of all of these colors, just enough to uh, put into a couple little scrappy projects. So yes, I'm really, really liking this. Kind of like with all my knits, I don't know if I'll use it a ton. 
but man, I did enjoy knitting it. It's mostly garter, uh, which is so easy and enjoyable. And I enjoyed the different colors. So yes, I highly recommend this if you are getting an advent or have an old advent and you're looking for a project to do. Love this. I have really detailed notes on my Ravelry page, which again is linked down below, where I say um, what section I use what day for, and I also have it down to how many grams I used for that section. So um, if that would help you out, these were all 20 gram minis, um, just so you're aware of that. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say about that shawl. And until I get too hot, I'll, I'll leave it on. So we have all the advents. Let's just wear all the advents because that sounds like fun. The next and last finished object I have to show you is a pair of socks. Aren't these fun? I love the colors. These are the Bear Paw socks that I knit for the DRK, well, no, Dre Ray Knits. That's her Ravelry name, Andrew Mowry, uh, for her fifth annual, I think she calls it the Fall Challenge, which is to be knit over the long Thanksgiving holiday. I happen to have the weekend off, except for I think I have to work overtime tomorrow, which sucks. But anyhow, I got these done. Um, the bummer part is they are too big. I have knit so many of the DRK Everyday Socks, which is this sock, but in fingering weight. And this is fingering held double, so essentially a DK weight. And I'm just bummed because in the DRK Everyday Socks, I use the suggested needle size, the suggested um, you know, area where you start the gusset increases, like everything to pattern, and it fits good. So I even checked my gauge, like I didn't do a gauge swatch, but after the fact I checked it and it's a bit hard to tell because she's talking about taking a gauge over blocked ribbing, which, you know, you can block that a lot or a little. Uh, so it's hard to tell, but row gauge is easier and I'm, I'm right on. So I don't really understand why. And looking in the thread where everyone else is knitting these, it seems like those are coming out great. So I don't know. I'm I'm bummed, but uh, my mother-in-law wears a slightly larger sock than I do, and these I could wear. I just really they're sloppy. Like they're too big in the toe. They're too big in the heel. They're too a little bit too wide. So I think she will like these better. I'm a little bit bummed about that though because this um, speckled yarn that I held with a undyed white was a remnant that I got from Oregon Flock and Fiber Festival from the Knitted Wit booth. And uh, I don't know about this last year because I didn't check, but years previous, they have sort of their second skeins, ones that aren't 100 grams, um, just uh, maybe mistakes, and they sell them for slightly reduced prices. So I had gotten this white with speckle yarn from there. It was 78 grams. I wasn't 100% sure it was fingering weight, but uh, in knitting with it, I do feel confident it was a fingering weight. Whether or not it had nylon in it, I don't know. But uh, the reason I'm bummed is, you know, I just don't have any more in my stash. It's gone. Um, mostly, I don't mind that, you know, on to the next thing. I'll, I'll knit something else pretty, but uh, this one I am a little bit bummed about. I really wanted these to be for me. Um, they definitely remind me of, like, confetti cake or sprinkles on vanilla. I don't know. They're just, they're awesome. But uh, my mother-in-law is knit worthy. And uh, as long as those fit her, I will give those to her. And I know she will enjoy them. She does a lot of hiking too. So I think a nice thick sock might be good for that. Okay, on to our works in progress. I have a few, and of course, I always have some that I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to show you what I have been working on lately. This first one is a new cast on, and it is for another uh, knit along that's being hosted by Happy Little Yarn, and it's the um, Happy Little Yarn Leggings Cal, I believe. So, <laughs> super hard to show you what's going on here. Um, these are the Malone leggings, uh, which are really interesting. 
Uh, I don't think I wrote down the designer, but uh, again, it's it's linked down below. Very interesting construction. So these, you knit a huge gauge swatch, which I'm not the biggest fan of, and you use four or five needle sizes. You wash in the washing machine and dry in the dryer because you're using sock yarn, your swatch, and then you take gauge after the fact. And she has you take a bunch of measurements. There is a custom um, Google Sheets or Excel sheet. She has both available. You plug in all your measurements and your gauge and yarn details, and it creates a custom pattern just for you. I'm super nervous about that because I'm not very confident in my measurements and um, gauge. You know what I mean? Like it just, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do to measure yourself or to accurately measure gauge. It's just difficult. So I really hope these will fit, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, you'll notice this section here looks a weird, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, stiff, maybe. but And that's because this is a knit tube, essentially. I mean, you knit it flat and then you you stitch it together, but there is elastic encased in there. So before I put the elastic in there, I was thinking, oh my goodness, these look huge. And of course the elastic has negative ease because it will stretch. And you can see there, it's stretching pretty good. So um, now that the elastic is in, I'm feeling slightly more confident that these might fit. And like I said, it's super hard to tell because I have these on I think it's a 24 inch cord, it could be a 16, I don't know. Certainly my waist is not this big, <laughs> not even close. So yes, I am knitting this out of a 2021 advent, um, noticing a theme here. This is the Pearly Shell, which is a yarn shop up in Ilwaka, Washington, just north of me. And I'm starting with the full skein that I got which is this beautiful multi-gray. And I started with that because after that, um, once I get down just a bit further, I will start striping the legs with the everyday colors. That advent I also have kept in order. And I can attest to the fact that if you are someone who likes to keep their advents in order but don't plan on knitting them right away, Posting photos daily on Instagram is amazing. Um, both you can go back and check your Instagram and then if you have something like Google Photos that backs it up, you can search for a specific day and uh, then you, you can make sure that they are in order. Right now I am knitting what I'm calling the butt gusset. <laughs> Glenn thinks that's hilarious. That's my husband, by the way. Um, so. Essentially what you're doing is adding more fabric to the back than what is in the front. So once I'm done with that, and then I think I will start adding the stripes, but I don't really know until I check with the pattern again. So yeah, if you're interested in knitting a pair of leggings, uh, Happy Little Yarn is hosting that knit along over on Ravelry and, and Instagram. And you do not have to be done by the end of December or I think even January. She was talking about doing a year long and then she mentioned about something about June, so I'm not sure and I'm not certain that those will be done even by then. And honestly, they may not fit and I might rip them out altogether. Back in the day, I did attempt to knit another pair of leggings and those were the Marled Mania leggings by Stephen West. Truth be told, they were fitting great. Um, the problem that I had was I used Magic Knot uh, because they were super scrappy and marled. And so I just wound up two big balls of leftovers and had Magic Knotted them. As I'm knitting along, I can look back and see that some of these Magic Knot knots were coming out. And I just, I was like, no, this isn't going to work. So I ripped those out. Um, so I guess all that to say that I would really like to knit a pair of leggings, but. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if these fit. Um, maybe I should have just gone with the Marled, Marled Mania leggings again. I don't know. Too late now. Okay, on to... Oh, I do have more. I'm just... <laughs> it's a day, guys. It's a day. Um, okay, next work in progress. 
this was almost a half object. Um, and when I pulled it out of the bag, I was like, oh yes, I've definitely finished one. Nope, I haven't. Uh, this is on Waste Yarn. Uh, I wasn't at home. I guess I should show you the side with the prettier, <laughs> prettier uh, blocker. Anyway, uh, I was not at home when I was knitting these and I knew I was getting close to where I needed to start the toe. This is a men's sock, 72 stitches on a 2.5 millimeter. Just a vanilla sock with a slip stitch heel, contrast of course. And um, anyway, I put it on the scrap yarn because I wasn't at home, I couldn't measure for sure, and I didn't have DPNs, and I only had one sock needle with me. So I have cast on the second sock, which you see here. Very much the same, but it is a different contrasting mini that I've used for the heel. I pulled out, I used to do, let's see, on Ravelry there was a group called Sock Yarn Swappers, and it was kind of like row one. I, I'm trying to remember. It was like row one where you would pay a certain amount for so many minis and then they would send them to you. And But I don't think it was all one dyer. I don't remember how they came up with the yarn. Maybe it was. Um, but they were five gram minis. So I have two different five gram minis. No idea who the dyer is or <laughs> dyers because I don't think it's the same one. And I was pretty sure that five grams wouldn't be enough. Um, yeah, five grams wouldn't be enough for two heels so that they would match. Let's see if I can find. Here is, of course, this is attached to a sock. But yeah, I have just a little bit left from the first heel. And that's how much I have left from the second heel. So no way. I don't think that you could get two heels, at least two men's size heels out of one five gram mini, but I thought those were close enough to match. Close enough for me anyways. Those are going to be a gift. I really need to get these done before we um, go on our trip in December. Ugh, I just, I don't know, suddenly I don't wanna knit gifts. <laughs> I just, um, it's hard for me to like kind of pre-plan what I wanna knit because I much prefer to knit on something as I have the mood to knit on it, not because I have to. Seems like as soon as I have to knit something, it's very hard to get it done. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you, I did show recently, but it's an oldie but goodie. This is my Cozy Memories blanket. And the reason I'm showing this is because I have added a few squares. So I believe I showed you this one already. This is the leftovers, or part of the leftovers, from the sock. And then these three are the first three of the advent calendar that I used for the travel mode. So I'm really enjoying using that advent again and putting that in a square into my cozy memories. And then when I'm done with the cozy memories, I use every last scrap and I put it into my hexagon, or puff stitch hexagon blanket. So you see, this one's getting pretty big. I mean, it has a ways to go, but it's getting there. So you can see, uh, this is where I've left off. That was day three. And day two is the blue and white, and day one. So yes, I am absolutely loving using every last bit. So those three yarns have now been put into three different projects and they are finally all used up. I have a crashing blanket tower. I'm getting warm too, right by the fire. All right, so that is all of the works in progress that I have put work in on. I'm gonna grab my iPad here and we're going to announce some winners because I used one of those uh, YouTube comment pickers, which I had never done before. And so I took screenshots. So I'm gonna go ahead and read those. The first pattern winner that we have who used the uh, word pattern in their comment uh, is someone that I have known for a long time, which makes me so happy that she's won. It's Kaya of Sweden. 
And I said her name before on this podcast, and I said Kaja because it's spelled K-A-J-A. But I'm pretty sure she corrected me and said it's Kaya or something similar. So I'm sorry. I'm still sure I'm butchering that, but hopefully that's at least a little bit closer. Her comment was, happy 1K. The next pattern in line is the Isabel Kramer. I'm not sure if it's called back to life or black to life because they have it spelled out B parenthesis L parenthesis A C K. So it could be back to life or black to life. Uh, She says, I can see myself wearing it all the time. I do believe she's already started it, maybe. Um, So if that's the case, I would not want to buy her the same pattern she already owns. So Kaya, please get a hold of me and let me know what pattern is that you would like, and I will send it to you. There is a $10 US limit, um, but that opens things up pretty wide. I will say uh, the best place to reach out to me, you could reach out here on YouTube as long as it doesn't involve an address. So just for a pattern, um, you can leave your pattern of choice down below, or you can send me a Ravelry message or Instagram message. Again, Shauna Stitches, all those places, and you can click the link down below to easily find me. All right. The next pattern winner is uh, Missy Mandy Lou Knits and Things. And she says, congratulations on 1K subscribers. I came across your channel by chance, and the first one I watched was your Stephen West Mystery Shawls. They are all so fantastic. The next pattern I'd like to try is the Aurora Cabin Shawl. And if you don't know, that is the, I guess it's not even the newest Stephen West anymore, but it's the Hyper Knit Along 2022 pattern. And that looks fabulous. So Missy Mandy Lou, please let me know what pattern it is that you would like uh, and um, leave a comment down below and I will get that to you. I guess um, both Kaya and Missy Mandy Lou, I do need to know your Ravelry name as well. If you don't have Ravelry, then I think I need your email address. If you're not comfortable sending your email address on YouTube, which I do not blame you for, um, then please contact me on Instagram or Ravelry. That'll be the best. If for some reason those don't work for you, you can leave me a comment down below. I will figure out another way to contact you. Okay, so that was it for patterns. And thank you to everyone who commented, liked, subscribed, did all the good things for my 1K um, follower um, podcast. That was great. I appreciate you all so much. And it really is fun to have the group growing so that we can communicate and learn more from each other and just share things. That's really fabulous. Um, Okay, so the next giveaway was for the set of a progress keeper and a stitch marker that I showed in the last podcast. And those are from the Creative Emu on Etsy. And the winner there that used the word progress in their... um, progress or progress keeper in their comment was books and hooks. She says progress keeper blue and purple thoroughly enjoy you and your knits. Thank you. So again, um, since that is a physical prize, I will need you to contact me on Instagram or Ravelry. Send me your name, uh, your choice of the progress stitch marker set and, um, your address. Did I already say that name address? And your choice and I will get those purchased and sent off to you. So congratulations to all of our winners. I'm so excited and so happy to be able to share some of the knitting and uh, accessories love with you all. All right um, that brings us to what the heck are we gonna knit in December? <laughs> I think that should be like a big title. What the heck are we gonna knit? Because I don't know. Um, I didn't bring them over here but I have two 24 stripe um, advent skeins, one by the Cozy Knitter and one by Freckled Whimsy. Yes, I've been good. I have not opened the packages yet, um, but I will need to soon so that I can wind my yarn. I spent all morning scouring Ravelry trying to figure out what patterns I wanted to use on these socks. If you've been watching for quite some time, you know that my preference is to knit socks cuff down. That's because I find it's easier for me to get the correct fit 
Not that I haven't had some success toe up, but you saw how those bare paw socks went, and that just that's really disappointing to put all that work and uh, time and money into something. And yes, I could rip them out, I could redo them, but that's just not ideal. It's kind of a pain. So I really want to do toe up when it comes to these Advent skeins, because when they're 24 stripe, um, I see some people who their entire sock is 24 stripes. That is not the case for me. I think it's a combination of a smaller gauge and big feet. <laughs> I wear a woman's US 9, which isn't huge, uh, but it's not a US 5 either. So um, some people are able to get their entire sock out of the 24 stripes, and I wish. But um, that being said, if I start at the toe and do a contrast toe and then start the stripes, and do a contrast heel, um, I'm able to ensure that I get all 24 stripes in there and you know use extra if I need to, but I'd be afraid of making the leg too long because I do like a long leg and then maybe running out of stripes for the foot. I don't know, it's not the biggest deal. I could always use more white for the toe, um, but that's my hesitation. The, um, yeah, the, the second thing is finding a pattern that goes along with stripes. I was looking at so many and a lot had cables and stripes just seemed to really make the cables not stand out very well. And I don't know, I was just having a really hard time. I looked at hundreds if not thousands of patterns this morning and just felt stuck. I know a lot of people use plain vanilla, which are fine. I like that okay, but it's just not really my go-to. And yet I want something pretty simple because we are going to be traveling. So like, there's my dilemma. What's simple but not super plain and that I know it's going to fit. So I think, I think I've decided to do both of my 24 stripes um, in the DRK Everyday Sock, which is toe up. I just haven't decided whether or not I'm going to put the ribbing in. I might do half ribbing uh, where I just do the ribbing on the top of the foot and leave the, pl the bottom uh, plain stockinette. I might do plain vanilla, which I have done with that pattern before, and I might just do the full rib. Will this be weird? Will it be weird if I put my foot up to the camera? I don't know if I can. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's quite a stretch for me. So these, I don't remember what year I knit these in, but these are the DRK Everyday Socks. Scrappy. Uh, in fact, they are. They're all opals. Opal 10 gram minis. And I did the ribbing on the bottom of the foot. I like the way they fit, but I do find that Andrew Mowry uses a different stitch count than I normally do. I'm trying to remember if hers are 60, 60 stitches, if it's 68, I think it's 60. And I know I have mo modified some of the plain vanilla ones that I've knit to be 64, which is like my sweet spot. So I might do that and keep the rib. I don't know, it's all up in the air. The one thing I know for sure I'm going to be knitting and trying to do on a daily basis is the Nitty McPurley Advent. Hers are DK weight and they came with three patterns. The patterns are a surprise, uh, as in you don't know what they're gonna look like. I haven't looked at the colors, I don't know any of that, but I do know what the objects are going to be. So it's three accessory patterns. I'm, I won't spoil it here, um, but I'll just say there are things I don't normally knit for myself a whole lot, and I never use DK weight, and I think it's gonna be doable to keep up with. So that's my number one priority. Last year, I made sure that I did my stripe a day for the socks, and I just don't think I'm gonna do that this year. Uh, I'm gonna knit when I want to knit, and they for sure will not be finished. In fact, let me go run and grab, because I still have last two pairs of last year's socks. All right, so last year I did three pairs of self-striping socks. I did Freckled Whimsy, The Cozy Knitter, and one other. I can't remember what the other one is. I wonder if it's one of these. I'm really not sure. Um, let me see. Oh yes, okay, so this is the one I didn't do this year. This is the Mint Rain Yarns. I think that's what it's called. There's her tag, Mint Rain. Um, and for these, what pattern am I, am I using? I think these are, yep, these are the DRK Everyday Socks, but I did the plain stockinette on the bottom, and I'm doing the ribbing along the top. 
with contrast heel and toe. So I'm pretty sure all 24 stripes are in here already. I just didn't finish the leg. And I thought about putting pressure on myself to get these finished before this year. And I just, you know what I did? I bought more sock needles because I just don't need that kind of pressure in my life. <laughs> it's sad, but true. Um, and then the other pair that I still have going are the Freckled Whimsy. So I finished the Cozy Knitters last year. Only ones I finished, but they were knee highs, like literally to my knee. Um, so this is the other, the Freckled Whimsy. And these are the Solar Socks, S-O-L-A-R Socks. So you can see these are top down and I'm like halfway to the foot. I think I made it to the 24th stripe and I was like, I'm good. I don't know. Uh, three pairs was too much, which is why I only got two this year. And, you know, I probably could have just done with one. That being said, I haven't done my state of the stash yet because I won't do that until the very beginning of December, just in case something crazy happens this month. But I just have to say all the advents that I've gotten so far this year, well, I've gotten all the ones I ordered, very overwhelming. I really don't like the fact that it's commonplace to start listing advents in like April or May. Um, and then some of the, like, I don't know, just the attitude is, is that if you don't get them, then you're not going to get one. And I, I want one. Um, so then I order really early. And then as the year progresses, more and more come out, you know, here and there, they just sort of trickle in. And I get it. These are indie dyers. There's no industry standard of like they all go live on June 1st or something like that, you know. I'm not expecting that. I just, it's my mentality of like, I don't know, it's FOMO or something. I just really want the advent. And um, actually, one of the advents I bought because I sort of, um, I don't know how to say it, how to say it nicely, because I don't mean anything mean by this, but the dyer was going through some rough times and mentioned that it would really help them out if, if people purchased an advent from them, and so I did. So it's not that I didn't want it, but I didn't really need that one, um, but I kind of bought it just for that reason. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else. So yes, needless to say, it's overwhelming. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head how many I actually have. But I'll be going through all that um, in the state of my stash. I don't think that I will be doing, well, in fact, I know I will not be doing a Vlogmas, but on my Instagram page every day, I will be posting all of my advents. It's just, it's so much. Um, trying to think. Okay, so I have my two advent skeins, plus I have, oh, I didn't mention, I have a zebra yarn skein that starts December 25th. So that's like a true advent where it's the 25th and then 12 days on. And so I still have three socks. Um, and then I have a skein from a friend that's a dyer that I really want to knit in December. Oh, man. Uh, and then Advents, I have Nitty McPurley. I have the Charming Ew. Ew? Ew? <laughs> it's not the Charming Ew. It's the Charming Ew. Um, I'm trying to remember. I have, oh, I did a swap. I have another swap coming. Like, it's just so much. It's too much. I could literally knit advents for the rest of the year. You probably didn't need to hear me go on and on about my purchasing habits. I'm just finding I'm really frustrated with that. And I don't know if anyone else is feeling that way. Um, but let's <laughs> switch to a little bit happier note. I would love to hear what all of you are planning on knitting for your advents. I have seen a lot of videos come up for suggestions, and there have been some good ones. I really like the Adventurous Sweater by Dragon Horde Yarn, um, Tristan. Uh, it kind of looks like the Sea Glass Sweater. Is that what it's called? It's like one by one color work, but she has it mapped out so any size of her pattern can use a 24 day advent. Uh, and it also uses a contrasting yarn. Obviously that won't be for December, but at some point with my advents, that could be a project that I do. I also really like the Anthology Throw by Helen Stewart. Uh, that was in her knit vent this year. I purchased the knit vent when it was on sale, so like before it had even come out. And I don't remember how much it was, but it was like six patterns. And I'm a little bummed because the only one that I will knit probably, if I knit any of them, is the Anthology Throw. So I would have been smarter to wait till they all came out to see if I was even interested in them. But again, FOMO. I, like, I think it just gets me every time. Um, 
So that's those two are on my radar. Of course, those leggings. I don't know. So anyway, I would love to hear what you have planned for December. Did you get an advent? Do you like advents? Um, I don't know. I guess I'd like to hear your thoughts on advents if you have any you'd like to share. I think that's it. That was a lot. Thank you all so much for being here. I really do appreciate each and every one of you, both new and returning subscribers. You all are awesome for listening to me ramble on. <laughs> have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.